Welcome to the channel. I am that streamer dude. My friends on Twitch call me Rocky. You can catch me over there every Monday, Wednesday, Friday from 9 p.m. to like 2 a.m. Central Standard Time. I'd love to see you guys over there. Swing by and drop me a follow. For a little background on me, I created this channel to share everything that I have learned over my content creation career that started in 2016 uh, with you guys. And one of the things that I've gotten a ton of questions on lately here is alerts and, and mainly from new streamers, how to set up alerts, how to do different things with alerts. And that's what we're gonna check out today is everything alert related Streamlabs edition. I'm also gonna do an edition for stream elements and I'm gonna compare the two and give you some strong points for each, some weaknesses for each so that you can decide how you wanna go about it yourself. So if videos like this is something that you think you'll find useful, then feel free to drop a sub on this channel. If you learn one thing over the course of all these videos then it was worth your effort, right? It's free. So what are we gonna cover in this video? We're gonna talk about how to set up your alerts. We're gonna talk about where to get your images and your sounds for your alerts. We're gonna talk about how to do uh, different variations. Say if you want variations of alerts for certain bit amounts or for resubscribers or subscribers that have been subbed for X amount of time. We're gonna talk about how to plug your alerts into your stream, different ways to do that so that it either all pops up in one area or you can have Follow alert on the right side and bit alerts on the left side and hosts from above. We're gonna talk about all that stuff. Hold on to your britches, it's about to get crazy. So being that this is the Streamlabs edition, it only makes sense that we go through and do this in Streamlabs OBS. Now, it'll be the exact same setup whether you're in OBS Studio except for one step. And we'll go ahead and, and cover one thing that's a little bit easier using Streamlabs alerts with Streamlabs OBS and that's the alert box. So if you have your scene and you're fine with your alerts being in the same place, regardless of what alert it is, then the easiest way to add that in Streamlabs OBS is to add what's called an alert box. So you would go right here above your sources, you'd click add new source, you'd choose your alert box, add your source, do it like so, okay? So you add your alert box, you can size it to however you want, but regardless of the alert, whether it's a sub, it's a follow, whatever it's going to be this size and it's going to be in this area there's definitely a better way to do it and i'll show you guys that a little bit further into the video so that you can have things different sizes different areas of the screen and such but for now we're going to go ahead and work with the alert box now if you're not on streamlabs obs the way that you can add this alert box is to go into your streamlabs over at streamlabs.com click on the alert box which should be right here and this is where you're gonna pull that information from. So you're in OBS Studio and you wanna set up an alert box. What you're gonna do is click right here under filter events, make sure all of these are checked and then you're gonna hit copy. Then we're gonna go back into OBS Studio or Streamlabs OBS if you wanna do it this way as well. You're gonna hit add, you're gonna add a browser source and then you're going to add a new source. We'll just call it alerts. And then right here, you're gonna go in and put that uh, control V and paste that uh, link that you just copied from streamlabs.com, okay? And so now this is your alert box without having to hit add and add an actual alert box. So real quick, let's just cover alerts and the things that you have available to you through Streamlabs, okay? So we'll start off with follow alerts. Uh, essentially, you're gonna have a whole bunch of different options here when you go through either follows or subscriptions, host bits. Um, but they're generally the same for each one of those events, okay? So you can choose your layout, and what this is, is whether you've got the text above the picture, on the picture, there may be different reasons that you want that to happen. Uh, and then you have your animations, so say you want it to fade in, or you want it to slide in and slide out. So right now, if we were to test this follow alert, you'll see it's gonna be very large on my screen here on the left, which is my Streamlabs OBS. Let's go ahead and test our follow alert. So you can see how it kind of faded in and then it slid out. So that would make a lot more sense if I had it on the edge of the screen, right? Uh, so those are really cool things you can do because uh, as far as the alert animations, uh, because it gives you some variation in how they present themselves. So if we take this alert box and we move it over to the very edge here and we do that again, you can have some alerts that if it's full screen anyways, you know, slide in and slide out of screen. Again, later I'll show you how to do it so that uh, th that makes a little more sense versus an alert box. So we have those different animations that we can do, and there's actually quite a few of them. You can control how it comes in and how it goes out. Uh, your message template here just displays what you want to display whenever this event happens. So, you know, I have it set just to show their name when they follow, uh, but you can find different, what are they called? 
template parameters. And I will put this uh, in the description, a link to this. But also, I think it shows it, and I'll show you here uh, the different parameters for each one of these alerts. But if you look up the template parameters, these are different commands that you can put in those boxes that'll show like the name, the amount that they've gifted, the time that they've subbed, that kind of stuff. So I think right here, if we hover over the message template, it shows you that the available tokens are line break and the name in the brackets, which I have right here. So we can just show the name uh, because it's not like it's going to show has followed for three months or anything crazy like that, right? Uh, you can have different animations on your text. And right here is where you're going to add your images and your sound. So with Streamlabs, there's a couple of, well, with both of them, but Streamlabs in particular, we're talking about right now, there are a couple of restrictions on your alerts. So first and foremost, they have to be in JPEG, PNG, GIF, or WebM format, and they have to be under 10 megabytes. So if you don't know, if you're new to PCs in general or new to any of this kind of stuff, and you don't know how to tell the file size of something, Whenever you go to your file explorer and say you go into your alerts, then you can hover over an alert and it'll show you down at the bottom there. The size of this one is 868 uh, kilobytes. So you want to make sure that it is under 10 megabytes for Streamlabs. So let's go ahead and add an image. Now, there's a couple different ways to do it. The way that I would recommend is to have your images downloaded on your computer and then click right here to select an image, go to uploads and then drag and drop or click here to upload your image. We have an absolute <laughs> ton of them. I, I can't even scroll through it right now. Literally hundreds of different uh, alert images here, but I would go ahead and have them on your computer, drag and drop. The other thing that you can do, and this will kind of transition me into the segment where we talk about how you can get or where to get your images and where to get your sounds, is you can go to a site like Giphy, and let's say we want to uh, use one of these GIFs here. So say we want to use this one right here. You can go right here and go to copy link and go ahead and get your GIF link right here. Copy that and then plug it into the link image right here in Streamlabs OBS right there, right? So here's where we would put our link image. I've never done that. I just know that it's available to you. Use it at your own risk. There's no reason that you wouldn't Go ahead and just download those images but here in a minute we will kind of build an alert together we'll add an image we'll add a sound and we'll make one together so uh, i'm not going to worry about doing that right now it's same thing for the sound right you would go in you would go to uploads now they do have some especially if you're like a streamlabs prime member that you can choose by default but again you would go to uploads and then just upload your sound right here for the sounds you're going to want to make sure they're either mp3 wave or these OGGs, which are just, I've never heard of it before, except for streaming. Right here, you'll be able to set the volume of your sound, which you definitely want to test out so you don't blow everybody's eardrums out, or uh, you know they're just useless because they can't be heard. Uh, you have your alert duration, which you want to set to as close as, so you can set images, just static images, if you want to use just a picture, uh, and then this alert duration doesn't matter too much, but I always feel like animation is way better, right? So if you have a gift there, you want to try and set it for a certain amount of time uh, that your sound bite runs or something like that, just so there's not a lot of extra time. On Streamlabs, what'll happen is that it will actually start looping through again. Uh, on Stream Elements, it just cuts and it's like dead space, right? So definitely try to set this to an amount that's as precise as you can get it so that there's no looping over and there's no dead space, right? So that's the majority of the things here as far as just straightforward adding an alert, getting alerts on your stream. Now let's get into variations here. And so if you want to add some variations to your alerts, say for resubs or different bit amounts and such, what you want to do is say, we'll do it right now for resubs. So we'll go to subscriptions, say we have it all set up. We have it exactly how we want for our default subscriptions, but we want to do something special when someone you know, subs for say a year or six months in a row. You're gonna scroll down to the bottom and you're gonna open alert variations. And here you'll be able to, so let's say we wanna add a variation with a default setting. You can set the name of it. So let's just call it six month subscriber or let's just call it one year. The condition would be someone has been subscribed for exactly 12 months, right? Then it's just the same as we already covered. You can add exactly what you want your message template to be. Again, it gives you uh, the brackets name, but also months, which again, check in the description for that link. It'll tell you those parameters that you can add and it'll show the number of months that they've been subscribed to. You can set your text animation. Down here, you can set your font. 
all the same stuff, your font size, font weight, all of that jazz. And then whenever you, I think I already have one for here. And now when you get somebody who's been subscribed for a year and they hit that subscribe button, you'll get a different Hello, alert. Bruh. It's, it's your birthday. birthday. We're gonna party like it's your birthday. We're gonna sip a party like it's your birthday. And you know we don't give a fudge that it's your birthday. Compared to our normal sub alert, which would just be this. So let's go ahead and build a random variated bit alert together here. We'll go ahead, we'll find the, the image, we'll find the sound, and we'll build it from scratch. So we're gonna go to bits. Now on your bits page, you'll notice here that you have a minimum bits to alert. Uh, essentially, it, it all depends on how you want it to be. So when we first started streaming, we had this set to one bit. And it didn't take long to realize that my chat was a complete troll. We had this thing called One Bit Yoda where it was just like a short little blip of uh, Yoda from that, uh, oh gosh, what's that song? The seagulls poke your knees. <laughs> right, and, and we had that set to one bit. It wasn't that long, right? We turned it on for like 10 seconds and it went for like 30 minutes straight. So this is the minimum amount of bits you want somebody to, to be able to uh give to you before it plays an alert i have mine set at 100 feel free to set it at whatever you feel like works best for your channel right same settings volume yeah 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 one of the things i will say this though um that you'll notice versus the stream elements uh alerts is that if you if you use a video so say like a webm and a lot of you aren't even going to know what a webm is but i am going to do a video on how to take like movie clips or different videos that you might have make webms out of them if you're using a video clip like that it doesn't really give you a way to adjust the sound of that video on streamlabs you have to separate it into a video and a sound file stream elements does a better job of that maybe that's something streamlabs can work on in the future but if you do know what a webm is a webm is and you do decide to use a video just know that you need to render it at the perfect volume you're not going to be able to adjust it here so we're gonna go down here and we're gonna to go to open alert variations. Here is another downside of Streamlabs in that these are all the different alert variations we have, okay? There is no way to really organize these well. So for Streamlabs, uh, when you add things, it just gets added to this list. You enable, you, dis you disable. But sometimes like say I'm playing a scary game, I may have uh, a, a 333 bit variation that for certain games is one thing but when i play a scary game i want it to be a different alert so i just have to either overwrite that one or i have to disable the original 333 alert and add another 333 alert on stream elements you can have different overlays so you can have like scary games overlay that has all your scary alerts and you use that that night and then you can switch to your normal overlay when you're not playing scary games it makes it a little easier to organize things uh, but we're going to come down here to the very bottom and we're going to add a variation with default settings. So you can add a name here. We'll just call this uh, completely at random 6969. Perfect. Uh, and then we're going to want the condition to be, say we want a specific alert to play when somebody donates 6969. We're going to set this to be bits to use is exactly this amount. Now, if you notice this other options, bit use is at least this amount. You can have, say, alerts that play from a default amount from one bit to 100 bits, and then another one that plays when it's at least 200 to 500, and another one that plays when it's 500 to 1,000. That's what that is for. But we're going to use bits is used exactly at 6969. The bits amount, that's our 6969. And then we'll leave all this the same for now as far as the layout being the image above the text actually we're gonna do the yeah let's do the image above the text and for the alert animation we'll just have it fade in and fade out we'll leave the default message template text yada 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 but we're gonna go find us a good gif here that we can use for our, our alert so you can either just go to google and type in what it is you're looking for and then type gif and type animated right or you can go to specific sites uh one like giphy where you can come in and just do a search. So say we want to find just like a funny dog gif, right? Okay, that was pretty funny. Say we want to find a funny dog gif. 
something like this okay this will work <laughs> you'll come in here you'll open it up you can either copy your link or you can right click and go to save image as and save it to wherever you want on your computer now we'll do the same thing for our sounds there are a bunch of different sound boards and stuff that you can find if you want to just search like you wanted a peter griffin sound you can search peter griffin soundboard whatever uh, but there are uh, some websites that will let you go through and listen through a bunch of different sound effects and you can download them there. And one that is easy to use is called Zapsplat. Let me make this bad boy right here. And then we'll just find something that goes with that image. Uh, yeah. We'll just look up like, oh God, what am I about to get myself into? Flicking lips. Perfect. <laughs> so we'd click right here, MP3. This is a trusted site, so we don't have to worry about much and then we would download it. All right, now that we have both our GIF and our sound saved to our computer, it's as easy as clicking here and going to uploads, dragging in our GIF like so. We're gonna go ahead and click it and select it and we're gonna do the same with our sound. select it there uh we'll set our alert duration so again how i showed you how you can kind of hover over those files earlier and it shows you the size it will also show you the duration for like sound effects and stuff like that so if you hover over this one it shows me that it's two seconds long so i'll set this alert duration for three seconds and then we'll make sure it's all right we have it set for 69 69 bits used exactly at that we're gonna have it fade in and fade out Let's go ahead and save it, and then we'll test it out. Perfect. <laughs> I can't stop. It's just <laughs> it's too great, dude. All right, so now let's get into the last part here where I'm going to show you how to kind of split these alerts up, and it's actually really simple. So how we made our alert box earlier, right? Uh, if we're not using Streamlabs OBS, we came in here and we copied this uh, URL right here blanked out for a second. We copied this URL right here and we paste we pasted it into a browser source If you want to split things up So say now I want this to not be all alerts, but I want to rename it and I want to have it be just Let's call it bit alerts So we want to have a separate one for our bit alerts what I'll do is I'll filter I'll go to filter events and we'll uncheck literally everything but bits so that now the only thing that will be in this widget URL is bits. So we'll hit copy. We'll go over here to bit alerts and we'll go to properties and we're going to change this URL right here to our new one. So now if I test something like a follow, nothing's going to happen, but I come in here and we test our bit alert right here. It'll still happen in the box. So that way, we can have it set up. So say we just want this, this bit alert and all bit alerts because there's no way to have separate boxes for certain amounts, right? So you're gonna be limited to, I want my bits over here, I want my follows over here, whatever. But we want all our bits to be down here. So we want this to slide in from the bottom of the screen. So we'll go into edit and we'll change this to be slide in up and we'll have it slide out down. Now, when we do that, and we save here. This should slide in from the from the bottom and then slide back down. Perfect. So we would do the same thing for follows. So now we want our follow alerts to be over here off to the side, right? So we're gonna go through to the filters here. One more time. We're gonna unselect everything except for follows. I always like to double check it. Now we're gonna copy this. We'll add a new browser source. And we'll just do, we'll just call it follow alerts. I cannot spell follow alerts like so. It'll pop up the properties. We'll paste in our link there. We can drag and resize it however we want to. And we can set it. Oh, 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 oh. We can set it right up here. And now whenever we test our follows, you play games with me, boy. it'll be up there in a separate area. 
So you can go through and do that with your subs. If you want your subs to be full screen, if you want them to be in a different corner, you just gotta go to your filter events and you've got to use a different URL for each one of those browser sources. Streamlabs also supports transparency. So you could actually go into say Google and do like a uh, funny GIF transparent and I always feel like motion is better. Go to images. Uh, let's click on animated and then, you know, you could go, what is that? This is literally nightmare fuel. I have to put it in an alert. So you would, uh, you would save this the same way, save image as, then we'll come in here and we'll edit our bit alert. We'll change it from the dog and we'll go ahead and drag and drop in whatever that hideous creature was like so. And whenever, <laughs> let's go ahead and select it. Fantastic. Save, save, test. So as you can see, there's no background behind it. It's not just like a square box. And I show you that because there are transparent GIFs, but also if you're just using like an image that doesn't have a background, uh, it, it will work on Streamlabs without being just like a black box behind it. catch me rotten dirty. So I feel like with that information, if you're using Streamlabs, that should be enough to get you started. And maybe it even taught you something if you've been streaming a while, maybe you didn't know how to do some of that stuff. And I would be super interested to hear that. Uh, so, you know, hit me up on Twitter, join the Discord. And if you have any more questions about this, again, I stream over on Twitch three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, from 9 p.m. to like 2 a.m. Central Standard Time. I'd love to see you guys come back by there and uh, ask your questions or say hi. I'd just love to have you. On the next video, we'll cover all the same stuff only for stream elements. And uh, some of you guys should really watch that and compare the two and see what you feel like works better for you because I've changed. I've gone back and forth. I've gone back and forth from OBS Studio to Streamlabs OBS and there's strength and strengths and weaknesses for both. And so I encourage everybody to check that video out too, even if you don't use Stream Elements. So you can kind of compare and see, you know, which one you feel like might work best for your channel. Anywho, that's where we're going to leave it off and we'll see you on the next video, guys. See you later, dudes.